Have you ever been in front of a camera when the flash went off? Wham! And you just were blinded in that moment, especially if you didn't expect to have somebody take your picture. Well, this is the way that some problems hit us. It, we're just blindsided by them. We're blinded by the problems that seem overwhelming to such a degree that in the moment and sometime after the moment, we don't know what to do. We can't see anything. We can't see any solution. We can't see past the problem or the challenge because it has blinded us so much and it seems so overwhelming. It happens to all of us at one time or another. It's very normal, even for people that go to church. The gist of the matter is, what do we do after we are blinded by a problem? First, we have to know that God is never blinded by any of our problems. God is bigger than our problems. God knows the solution to every one of our problems. As the old hymn sings, was blind, but now I see. Let me tell you what one man did. For three years, that's a long period of time, this man went into a period of absolute depression, and therefore he tried to mask that with heavy drinking. He tried to get away from his problem by escaping into alcohol. Many times he would find that he woke up with huge periods of time missing from his memory. He would wonder what happened to those days. When he awoke, he would sometimes find himself in places that he didn't recognize, that he would never go if he was rational in his life. One time he woke up in a gutter. What do we do when we are blindsided by a problem? How do we overcome this? Instead of taking up the bottle, we take up God. We solve problems with a higher level of mind than that in which the problem was created in the first place. The only way to permanently solve a problem, and if you want to solve a problem, you want to solve it permanently, is with God's ever-present help. When the man that I spoke of a minute ago was last seen, he had tears in his eyes because he had found God, and he was telling people, of what happened after the presence of God was realized in his life as a permanent solution. He had real hope, and he has lived that way for now almost 30 years that way. I would like to share a story with you from our Bible, John 9, 1 through 11. As he walked along, this is talking about Jesus, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, he was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. Think for a moment about that problem or solution that you have in your life that is in your worries this day. Think of it in a new way. It has come to you. And for a while, it has blinded you. But now you realize that this is going to be a great help that you will experience from God. With God's help, this is going to be a major turning point 
in your life. God works are going to be revealed in your life. Jesus said, we must work the works of God who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had said this, he spat on the ground and he made mud with the saliva and he spread the mud on the man's eyes saying to him go and wash in the pool and he went and he washed and he came back and he was able to see the neighbors and those who have seen him before as a beggar began to ask is this not the man who used to sit and beg some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, it can't be. It's someone like him. But he kept saying, yes, I am the man. But they kept saying, then, how were your eyes opened? And he answered, the man called Jesus made mud and spread it on my eyes and said to me, go and wash in the pool and I went and I washed and I received my sight there is great truth in this story when we have a problem we may have also been born blind into that problem we may have looked at the problem but we did not know how to solve it you might have said what do I do now? Where do I turn? What do I do? How do I take care of this incredibly big challenge in my life? This Bible story is telling us that if we mix what we have right now with God, that all things are going to work out fine. Where was that man standing? Was he standing on dirt? You can take the ordinary dirt where you are right now. Not where you think that the grass is greener out there somewhere. You take that understanding under your feet, mix it with what is holy, and spread it over your problem, and you're going to have sight again. With God's help, it is always miraculous. Everyone is born blind in the beginning of big problems. When I have a problem, I admit to you I'm born blind too. I don't know how to solve it in my human mind. I search my human mind and I might get ideas for a way to solve it or a direction to go. But until I mix that with God that is already with me and within me, I don't know how to solve the problem. I could have had a problem for years. I could have done what the human mind often does. And that is, well, just shrug your shoulders and say to yourself, I've got to learn to live with this. I could have taken up some habit or device to escape in trying in vain to make myself feel better or mask it. But when I wake up in the gutter feeling sick, when I have days missing from my life from worry and not having any self-respect, then I know that that is not the answer. The answer is always found one place, and that is in God. We have to turn to God and mix with God and allow wonderful things to happen again in our life. Now let's say that you have a problem as you're watching this television 
and you have had that problem for a very, very long time. And you are blind in the problem. It has been a part of your life for so long that it seems that you were born blind with the problem. And by this time, you falsely believe that it's going to be with you forever. Mix it with God. Mix it with God. Mix it with God. You pray, which is talking to God. And then enter into the silence of prayer and simply listen. This is a surrender of human ways. At first, the human mind wants to hear voices and thunder and it wants to see the sky part and all sorts of wondrous outer things to happen. This doesn't happen and it often disappoints human mind. But we hear other things. Soft, gentle, silent voices and ideas. These voices are so silent that sometimes it takes us days to even realize what we have heard and felt. And then if we practice the silence, practice surrendering to God, we enter into a whole new place which is called the secret place of the Most High. In this place, you're infilled with a oneness with God, a God that does not have your problems. You are infilled with a majesty that begins to take over and untangle the maze of your life. You're infilled with a feeling of goodness in you again. Now you still temporarily have the problem that was there in the beginning. But now you have an anticipation, fill you, that knows that God is greater than this problem or challenge in your life. And you have a source. You are connected with a solution and an answer. You're not stripped defenseless. You have everything in the world right now. And you know it without a doubt. What incredible spiritual power this gives you. God turns the ordinary into the extraordinary inside of you. Jesus mixed himself with God. And this created a great change in those around him. Second, Jesus turned the unhappy, depressed people who had been in their problems so long that they were weighted down by them into joyous people. He brought smiles back to their faces. Third, Jesus turned those who were sick in body to perfect health once again. Think about when Jesus turned the water into wine. Think about it in your own life. You might have had a whole lot of ordinary water, but no wine, which is extraordinary. Now, the water is ordinary. The wine is the extraordinary, the miraculous. You might have a whole lot of the ordinary, but nothing of the extraordinary, or those things you dreamed of in your life. And then, all of a sudden, in an instant, the God-given miracle is yours. When it comes, you realize, hey, this isn't from me. It's from God. It is because you have surrendered to God. Nothing is impossible with God. Next, I turn in our Bible to John 5, verses 2 through 9, where it says, Now in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, there is a pool, 
which has five porticos. In these lie many invalids, blind, lame, paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had been there a long time, and he said to him, Do you want to be made well? And the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no way to get into the water. I have no one to put me in the water when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once, this man was made well. He took up his mat, and he began to walk. Now here was a man who had stayed in the same place for 38 years. For 38 years, he had accepted his problems and his challenges, and he was also accepting the obstructions that were in his life to solving his problems. He had decided that there was no way for his problems to be solved. And if you notice, he was ready to argue with any idea that he could be changed for the better. I suppose that too will come when we surrender at first. It takes practicing in the silence of prayer to fully accept the continuous, available help of God. When God inspires you, telling you of a perfect way, and it is different than you have ever conceived of before, maybe over a lifetime, like this man, you'll probably argue, no, God, you just don't understand. I've tried that. Oh, I've tried that many times. You remember the story of the fisherman who had fished all day long? They hadn't caught anything. And then they mixed with God, and God told them, go out again and try one more time. And they said, basically, no, you're crazy. Why should I waste my time? But they mixed with God. They threw their nets out one more time. And they came up with so many fish that it almost broke their nets. When you mix with God in your awareness, it changes everything in a moment's time. Now here was a man that had laid there for 38 years. He had hoped for a change, but he had done so only in one way. In his own defeated, blinded, human mind way. He said, well... If I could get into the water, while the water was stirred up, then I would have what I need. We think about that, too, when it concerns our careers. We think about that, too, when it concerns the direction of our relationships, the healing of our bodies. We may have been in a problem for a long, long period of time, maybe 38-year period of time, a lifetime. And we think, oh, if only I could get here, or if I could get there, then I would have a solution to my problem. My friends, we waste a lot of time in our life, in our daydreams, that will never work from human mind. When we surrender and we mix with God, when we enter into the silence of prayer and get a new divine idea, God tells us to stand up and walk. And we say, what? Well, that's a revolutionary idea. <laughs> Something 
though is spiritually energizing you and, and it's so powerful, it happens in that instant in a miraculous way when you have the touch of God upon you. Now, if you've been in a certain problem for a long period of time, perhaps 38 or more years, literally you are immersed in it like a tea bag, and you have become your problem. We are so blinded that we are frozen by it, and we've come to accept it as part of us. We're not moving. And God says to us in a startling moment of prayer, stand up now and walk. And we say, God, you just don't understand, God. I can't stand up and walk. I've tried that before. And God says again, stand up and walk. Where do you want to walk? What is the solution to your problem? Mix it with God, and God will give you the way. God will give you the power, and it is the power of true hope to be motivated to walk. God gives you the power to try again, the power to realize that when you try this time, you're not doing this as yourself but mixed with God's help. And you're radiating differently from inside of you. And you're attracting a whole different thing to you because this time in your free will, you're willing to surrender to the power and the majesty of God. The IMAX Theater that I went to recently with my granddaughter was showing a movie about African animals. During the winter, the movie said, the animals would travel to fresh grazing land. However, in doing this, they had to cross a river filled with rapids. When the animals reached the other side of the river, they were often so fatigued from crossing the river that they couldn't go up the bank. They just laid there, almost to their demise. A lot of times, when you and I have been in a problem for a long period of time, we are so fatigued. This is natural. The human gets fatigued like a battery that is low on power, but God is the great recharger. God is the great renewer. God is the power that can regroup you and re-energize you. God will renew you. Many only need to be spiritually recharged to lift out of a problem, to get up and walk and experience a brand new life. The basic point, the bottom line, is that God can do it. Prayer puts us on the side of God. We must conclude every prayer with amen. Do you know what amen means? In the King James Bible, it means, and it is so. But in Hebrew and Greek in the Bible, it means verily, it is true, now. The great spiritual truth is that things become to us as we see them being. What we believe about them, what we say amen to. If we are saying to the problem, amen, that's the way it is, that's the way it's always going to be, that's the way I'm going to live with this challenge in my life, we're making the problem stronger than our life. We have to, in our free will, we have to stand up with God. We don't want to stay in our problem any longer, and we choose not to. 
we say amen only to God and the solution, and even if we still can't see it with our human eyes, we can believe it with our heart because we believe in God. God is moving in your old problem right now. And you let God move with a feeling of, of absolute permanency. You say, Amen. It is complete right now with God's help. Every problem in your life has an entrance and it also has an exit. As you pray, do not stand on the side of the closed door. The door in front of you is the answer to your prayer. Do not stand here and say, Oh God, if only I could have an answer. Mm -mm. You get up, you go through God's open door. Seeing yourself doing this in prayer helps. See yourself in the mind's eye going through that open door that God has provided for you. And you're surrendering in total belief to God. You're walking through that doorway with spiritual help. The entrance to God is the exit to your problem. After you walk through the door, you are now in a new realm, a new state of awareness. You are in spiritual awareness. You start fresh with God and you're able to forget the past, forget the fatigue, forget failure, and move forward. I will share one more Bible verse with you. Luke 18, 1 through 8. And then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God. Now the fear of God is respect of God and no respect for anyone. They got it right on the second translation. Yet, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice just so she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to God's chosen one who cries out to God day and night? And will God delay long in helping them? I tell you, God will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth. This is talking about human consciousness and the difference between God and human consciousness. So often we think of God as a God that we have to keep bothering and bothering and bothering to convince. We think that if we bother God enough, if we wear God down, if we go to God enough, then we will change God's mind and God will grant us all that we desire. But this is not the way God works. This is the way human mind works. I could come to you repeatedly and bother you day in and day out and you would say, yes, I'm going to give it to this guy because he's bothering me so much. But how much more will the love of God do? God is not a God that needs to be convinced. God is already on your side. 
God is on your side waiting to give you help, waiting to give you victory. Now this problem may be in your life so that God can give you a victory. When you go to God, do not think that you're going to a moody human who you have to convince, a temperamental God. Now think about God as Jesus spoke of God as loving, willing, ready, and willing to give you everything you desire. God's help has come. God's will is willing. When you go to God, you give thanks continually. You will say, I'm not on the outside of the door knocking and looking in. I'm right now on the inside. I'm feeling all God's power and majesty at work in me and around me. Prayer is not for the purpose of changing God's mind or influencing God to do something. It's purpose. And the reason we need continual prayer, as Jesus spoke of, is to change us. We're the ones that are blind, blind to the ever-present help that is ever available to us. We are the ones who have to cultivate our own acceptance. We are the ones who need to have our minds and our hearts uplifted. God is a God who is continually with, with us, ever present, our help in every need. And our constant receiving of God's help solves our problems every single time. God's love and supply will take care of our needs when we give God our willing cooperation. What are we focusing our vision on? What is causing our blindness? We should minimize the problem and magnify God. When we ask God for the wisdom to comply with the divine plan, everything begins to happen. We're shifted into gear and spiritual movement begins to happen. We have spiritual help happening even without our effort. But then we're empowered with the motivation in human mind and the motivation in human body to go in the direction that we should go. We're God empowered. Human ignorance often causes problems in the first place. But God's love and God's wisdom solves all problem by throwing light upon darkness. Remember your problem exists only in you. It does not exist in God. When you're mixing with God, you're mixing with a purity. A purity, a cleanliness that does not have your problem. No matter how big the problem is, it just does not exist in God. My friend, I'd like you to take a moment now, if you will, and pray with me. Close your eyes and join me in prayer. Dear God, I listen for divine guidance. I am open and I am receptive to your inner voice and I sincerely seek to be a productive channel of your expression. I give you a gift, God, the ultimate gift that I have to give. I bring you the gift of myself. I offer myself to you in loving service. Here I am, Lord. Use me. 
Dear God, I trust in your divine plan of good for my life. I know that you can touch me, heal me, that you can take away my problems, that you will give me the divine ideas that I need that will change my life around. I know that your plan will fulfill the divine blueprint of my life. And I am thankful, dear God, for the impact of your God-loving actions and ways upon all in my world. I know that this action that I am taking will ensure greater good than I have ever dreamed of. Miracles are here. And those dreams that I have wished for in the past will be forthcoming. God, you are in my life. God, you are my supply. God, you are my constant joy. I will keep my thoughts stayed on you and allow my life to be used as a channel through which your love freely flows. How thankful I am, God. I'm no longer blinded. I can see.